presenting your host for the RaceCoin podcast, Jay. Hi guys, and welcome to the RaceCoin podcast. I'd like to welcome the racer, Nick Johnson, who's been living his dream. Welcome, Nick, to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so, I mean, let's kick it off. You've been in the game for longer than most, right? You started at an early age of just six years old, and now, after 45 years of experience, tell me, what has been the highlight of this entire journey? <laughs> well, you know, I think it's more than one highlight, actually. It's very hard to pick one of, you know, what I've, of been, course, of course. I've been living, of course. But uh, obviously, you know, in the very beginning, to, to work with, uh, with my dad and my, you know, kid brother, you know, trying to get to this point was obviously have obviously been fantastic you know for me uh growing up throughout the motorsports arena but uh, some of the highlights must obviously be driving for some of the manufacturers and uh, you know have podiums at Le Mans and you know winning Sebring and uh, the 12 hours of winning you know Petit Le Mans out here uh, while driving for manufacturers and stuff it's obviously some of the highlights along with uh, running my own teams winning a you know, manufacturer championship for Kia uh, back in 2014 and 15 and, and the championship in 2011 in the Carmel Tire Series. I mean, that's that's kind of, you know, the, the highlights, I guess, if you look at when, from when I got into car racing. But, you know, there's a lot of different things in between there that, you know, I'm very proud and, you know, happy for as well, of course. So let's touch up on that. I mean, what kind of stuff um, outside of racing? Because I know, obviously, most people just see the the um you on tv and you in the races themselves but don't really get to know too much about the other things so would you like to go into a little bit about what kind of things has been the highlights throughout the journey that may not have been seen by other people yeah i mean i've been very fortunate you know to to one you know work with a lot of you know professional people both from an engineering standpoint in in the racing community uh, fantastic crew chief mechanics and you know team manager owners and all the, the people behind the scenes that never get to, to the racetrack as well. You know, the, what people don't realize that, you know, racing is a real team sport and it's mm. not just driver. You know, it, it looks like that, if, especially if you follow Formula One or, you know, NASCAR over here or IndyCars, it's always the, the driver that, you know, gets, gets all the attention. But yeah, with that, like, yeah. Um, yeah, back, you know, back in the shop, even guys sweeping the floors and cleaning and stuff when the guys are off to the races, if those guys weren't there doing their job, we couldn't do our job, you know, so I'm always very, very, you know, keen on uh, put, uh, you know, pointing that out, that it's, it's a team sport and it's one missing link, you know, is there, then you, you couldn't do what you do. That's, that's, the, that's the truth, you know. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you said that because it kind of flows on to something else that I wanted to touch upon, which was throughout this journey, obviously the team is, is a huge impact on, you know, the way you uh, feel when you're racing, the kind of support system that you feel you have. For those who are, want to possibly get into racing, for those who may want to be inspired by your story or maybe feel like it is possible, what would you say to them to really feel like, do you know what, racing isn't just something that, um, you know, it's not just purely based on just luck, you know, or do you, do you feel like there is, what can people do really to make progress and steps towards fulfilling that dream? I mean, I think first of all, it's obviously you need to have a real passion for it because like everything else, you know, your job or, you know, somebody that, you know, has a dream and they're trying to, to pursue that, you're obviously going to run into a lot of obstacles um, like, you know, we all do. And I think the important thing is to kind of just keep, you know, living your dream as, as I said, I'd done and, and been fortunate enough to get all the way, but uh, there have been a lot of, you know, up and downs for me as well. For example, when I first came to the States, a lot of people know that my closest, you know, friends and, and race, of course, knows this, but I lived in a rental car for nine months when I first came to the States. I had, had nothing. I just quit my job back in, in Sweden and uh, took an opportunity, or took a chance, I should say, came to the States and uh, start traveling around in a rental car and lived in a rental car in different wow parking garages and stuff like that, handing my CVs out to different racetracks and so forth before somebody gave me a chance. And I think they just proves that, you know, if you, if you really, really have a passion and a big heart for something, I think it's very important to, to try to do anything it takes to, you know, to live that. But at the same time, you obviously also have to, you know, catch a break from time to time and meet the right people at the right time to get an opportunity. And that's why you know, I think we're going to talk about a little later. That's why I created, you know, KDE management where, you know, that I've been working with, you know, for the last three years, I've been working after these same philosophy, my whole career myself, but I never put anything down on paper and started to kind of, you know, do anything for other people. I just kind of use that, you know, uh, 
for myself, uh, playing other sports on a very high level growing up as well. I used to other team sports and individual sports and stuff like that. I, so I, I've always been an athlete, you know, at a pretty high level uh, and, you know, been u- utilizing and using that, you know, to my, to my benefit in, in motorsports as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm so glad that you said that because uh, people like Conor McGregor have been through something similar. I mean, his story is pretty famous. Jay-Z was handing out CDs, you know, trying to get someone to uh, recognize what he was doing. And, you know, I guess at all stages until, you know, people just see you now as, uh, you know, successful and having done so much, but they don't quite know things like this, the journey that it takes to get there, you know, and, it, and it's pretty extreme living in a rental car. I'm sure most people wouldn't be prepared to do something like that. But now that you do have this level of experience and now that you have had so many races under your belt, how does that affect the way you make decisions on the track? You know, does that make you more cautious? Does that make you more, how how does that um, affect of what you've been through in the past affect the way you drive on the track? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, age and experience, you, you trade that, you know, for, for reflex and, you know, like the pure, you know, out speed that you have maybe when you're a little younger, right? You're coming up through the go-kart ranks and, you know, a lot of kids, I call them, that I raced against and with today, they obviously coming out of the go-kart ranks and maybe, you know, just been rent- racing cars for three, two to three, four years. So they have a little bit different, you know, view and uh, than I have. I mean, I, I understand and know that, you know, throughout the, the race, you know, especially you're doing sports car racing, endurance racing, as I've been doing for many years, the, you know, you don't, need, you don't need to win the race in the first corner on the first lap because there is going to be yellow flags, caution flags. There's going to be pit stops. There's going to be driver changes. So there's so much stuff that goes into the you know, overall picture that is hard to, to grasp and understand if you come from go-kart where you have like a 10-lap, you know, uh, race and you go to the single, you know, uh, seeders or like the feeder, feeder series, the junior formulas, it's the same thing. They race for 20, 25 minutes and you have to be on it, you know, from the get go. Otherwise you're going to be left behind, but the sports car racing and endurance race is a little bit different. And I think that's why myself, along with some of my other, you know, peers that I've been racing with over the years, like Bill Oblin, for example, who races for BMW still, Jörg Bergmeister with Porsche, Bertolini, who've been my teammate now for quite some years in Ferrari. We all, you know, in, in our late forties, early fifties now, and, and, you know, we are very few that still racing at this level. But I think what we still bring to the equation is the experience that we can hopefully teach and get these, you know, really, really quick young kids to understand that it takes more than just pure speed. You need to take care of the tires, you need to take care of the brakes, the gearbox and stuff, and have a good car to hand over to your teammate when it's time for him to go in there, you know. So it's, I think it's, it's all works if you, if you can stay in enough shape, as I said, I asked, you know, what's in the gym this morning, and there's no doubt it takes more work to kind of keep up with these youngsters, you know, uh, these days than it did like 20 years ago, but it's, uh, it's all fun and very exciting, you know. Yeah, I, it, it sounds, uh, it's so ridiculous, but it reminds me of that animation film Cars, where you feel like you've, uh, it's not just about going on the fastest <laughs> speed you can and just bombing it down as, as quick as you can, you know, and you need to just control it, and you know you're going to actually winning the, in a, a longer race in a longer term rather than just trying to be on that first corner. Um, one thing that you have done in 2018 is um, taking part in the Le Mans race. And it's, as you said, an endurance race. So what's that been like? And um, talking a little bit more recently in 2018 and kind of uh, discussing a little bit about 2019 too, how has this past year really affected your mentality towards driving and the way you would like to now approach 2019? Yeah. Well, 2018, you know, been another, you know, very good year where I've been, you know, uh, able to drive full time in, in a, you know, European Le Mans series, along with Le Mans, as you mentioned, uh, with my long, you know, long time co-driver, Tracy Krohn, who's also been, you know, the team owner for many years. And we always had, you know, very good co-drivers with us. Like for the last few years, we had Bertolini from Ferrari with us, obviously, and a lot of other famous drivers I can sit there and mention. But um you know, I, I have been taking the same approach really, you know, for many years as I done in 2018 because things doesn't really change from a you know, preparation standpoint and especially Le Mans. Uh, personally, I, I start preparing specifically for Le Mans about a month to six weeks out where I actually wake up in the middle of the night, two, three o'clock in the morning, go to the gym and work out for an hour and a half to basically adapt my body. 
and also eating, you know, in a different different uh, different way to kind of you know adapt my body to be able to eat right after a stint, like when I get out of the car at four in the morning or whatever, and you know, go back and rest and get back in the car. So my preparation stuff, you know, still the same. And I think that's probably why I also still be able to do this because I, I haven't changed anything since I was twenty to what I do today. You know, it's just a little more pain when you get out of the gym. Than the pain. <laughs> yeah, like, recovery is nice quick. <laughs> Thing, right yeah um, but i mean uh, looking forward to to 19 um uh i we haven't really 100 uh, percent determined exactly what the 2019 going to look like but i know i'm going to do quite a few races in in um in nurburgring at the vln championship uh, next year and there's some other you know some other opportunities as well that uh, i'm discussing right now with different uh, different teams and uh, and manufacturers uh, that probably going to be you know decided in the next next I would say four to six weeks. Um, I also carry on with, uh, you know, my management uh, company and uh, working with uh, three uh, very young, talented uh, drivers from, from North America that's going to be racing in different, different places in the world. One of them going to be running British, uh, British F3 uh, next year with uh, Ford Tech Motorsports and uh, another guy going to be driving partial season in the British GT with the uh, Jaguar uh, Invictus program. And then I have uh, another young young girl, a uh, 21 year old girl that I'm going to be helping out here in the states, running the you know Brother World Challenge in the in the GT4 series, and I'm going to do all the same things for all the people with coaching on track, but also put together a, a customized program which I do a three to five year program, everything from physical, mental, nutritional, psychological. A, a full package basically and you know most most professional race car drivers at the high level today they have either you know they all have a personal trainer they have a you know uh, uh, some sort of sports uh, psychologist kind of thing they have a nutritionist and a coach and stuff but i have you know been doing it for so long and i have a map you know i have a psychology degree in the, in the in the background as well as a background as well so i can do all these different things as uh, you know that you can have four or five people doing for you. And with yeah. me also, and I bump into this a lot of times when I work with, with different trainers that uh, they, they really enjoy working together with me because there's so much stuff that we do in a race car that they never experience. They don't know how to train. You know, they can get a, a, a girl or a boy or, you know, a driver in a very good shape. But certain things you have to do specifically for motorsports and been doing it for so long myself, I obviously know what it takes to, to do that. So that's why my, uh, my management company or, you know, uh, that, I, that I run um, is been pretty successful and uh, I've been very, very you know, pleased with the results I have seen, you know, with the people I've been working with over the last three years. So it's, uh, it's very fun to try to give something back but at the same time you know, transition into, you know, from a full-time driving probably in the next few years to help more young, you know, upcoming, you know, talented drivers to take them from karting or junior formulas into, you know, a real pro pro racing. I mean, that's that's what I really, really, you know, like to do. And with my connections across the world, doing this for so many years, driving so many different manufacturers, at least they will pick up my phone for a phone call when, when I call and, uh, you know, have a discussion and try to help some of these youngsters. So what made you want to do that? I mean, you're in the later part of your career now and, you know, this might be something that you would like to transition into and you've already started it while you're still on the track yourself and showing yourself as an example naturally. So what made you want to do this in the first place um, instead of just, um, you know, what inspired you to give back to the industry? I mean, I think, first of all, I obviously, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I lived in a rental car myself and know how hard it is to make it in, in this sport and in any sport for that matter. I mean, it's such a small percentage that wants to become a professional athlete that, you know, actually, you know, uh, uh, able to, to become a professional athlete for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. And at least what I feel I can do, one, I can train them and I know to what level they need to be and I can guide them in the right direction to not go in the wrong path, depending on what the end goal is. The end goal is to go, you know, IndyCar and run the Indy 500 or if it's Le Mans or if it's like the, the Daytona 500 in NASCAR or F1. There's so many different, you know, paths you have to take uh, to, to get to that end goal. And most people don't know what, what those are. And uh, most of the time they also go and, and start driving cars that's way over their capability and you don't have anything. So it's very important to kind of try to keep, you know, the, the level of car and performance to your skill level at the time being mm. before you forward. 
and that's kind of what I think I, you know, been able to help out quite a bit. And also why I, why I want to do it is because I one still have a huge passion for the sport and uh, I can mm -hmm. see there is a void in the market for this. And uh, why don't help people if you can, you know, and, uh, and, you know, at the same time, really enjoy it and uh, having the opportunity to help people since I have a good, good uh, relationship in, in, the, in the motorsports industry. That's, that's so interesting because now, um, obviously, you're able to give back and, you know, you have a breadth of knowledge in various fields. So what aspects of your current career now would you say you're trying to implement that advice to try and uh, still improve and get better at within your career? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I always tell uh, these youngsters I work with, I learn something every time, you know, I work with them because it can be, you know, very basic stuff that I learned, you know, 25 years ago. But then you start driving more advanced technologically, you know, cars that we have today. I mean, paddle shifting and, you know, like uh, traction controls and throttle maps and stuff. So some of that stuff actually, you know, take some of your really basic training and basic driving you know scale away because you don't really have to you know to to be as sensitive on the throttle and stuff as you had to use used to be when you drove a high power you know uh engine uh, in a car you couldn't just slam on it because you will get wheel spin all the time yeah. now you have price controls and stuff so you have to learn how to dial in and stuff like that instead so to me if you don't have the basics you're not going to be able to utilize all the tools in today's you know very high tech race cars either so i'm very much about learning the the basics you know from the very get-go and i have seen there's a lot of void uh, you know from from people coming up to the ranks that don't really know know that the basics and i always use the analogy of you know if you're building a house it's not enough to put three cornerstones in in place and then put the second floor on because the, the, the house is going to flip right they're going to flip over you need to have four cornerstones to put the second floor on and there's no difference here you have to put all the basics in place to be able to move to the next level you can you can you know get in a car and drive a car at the next level but you're not going to be able to utilize you know all the tools and all the all the stuff in that car so in the end you're not going to be as competitive as you could be if you yes. had all but this, this sounds like the advice of a, of a wise person uh, and a youthful uh, driver would not want to listen to this in the slightest. You can just, uh, I can see it right now. You being like, no, you need all filler, all fillers. And it's like, mate, I've got one pillar. I can drive. <laughs> I don't need this. Absolutely. Yeah. You old fart. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. all, no, all the I, I definitely get that sometimes and see that sometimes. But then since I still, you know, fortunate enough to drive, uh, and I get in the car and uh, show them this. That yes, actually exactly, works. exactly. And then it's like, hmm. And for example, you know, I, I was fortunate enough to to uh, to coach and manage this kid that won the LMP3 championship there in the states this year. And I drove the last the last race with him to kind of try to help him take home the the championship. And uh, and all the stuff that we have talked about and so on, you know, it's it, you know, it, it worked. He saw that when I jumped in the car and. And actually applied all this stuff, you know, boom, uh, it was was right there right away. And that that can also give the confidence to the people that you work with. But obviously, there has to be a a, a trust between you know coach management and and the driver. And that's one of the first things I always tell them that you know if you don't believe in my in my beliefs, this never, this relationship never going to work. But most of the time it works because they they see you know when they get get give it a shot and give it a try that it does work and yeah it's proof in the pudding as well naturally with your results and you know the fact that you've yeah. you've proven it yourself you're not just talking theory out of nowhere so i mean the last question that i want to end with is how does someone find a reliable coach or a team the kind of people that um allow them to have a support system in place that they can trust and build the sort of career that you've had where they get to live their dream yeah. well there's a lot of good people out there and uh and you know i know you know people that do the same thing as i do and but the the most important thing is to try to you know look around talk to people don't trust the first person you talk to because i you know it's very easy to get burnt in this industry as everything else and you know as i said there's a lot of good people out there it's also a lot of people that maybe make himself sound better than it is but this community is pretty small and um they don't last very long. Uh, but I think the, the first and most important thing is to have passion for it, go out there and, you know, always look 
a little bit ahead of what you're doing right now to kind of try to prepare yourself for the next step. So if you can go kart now, I, you know, I suggest that you start to go and visit maybe a couple of Formula 4 races or Formula Ford if you're in England or Formula USF 2000 if you're in the States or whatever to kind of, you know, just, just go and see how things works and, you know, talk to a few people, talk to a few teams and, and obviously, you know, uh, reach out to, to people who, who does this as, you know, myself, for example, you know, KDE management, we, we, we work a lot with a lot of youngsters and so far we had a very good track record and, you know, we, we, we're going to carry on doing that. So I'd be, I'd be happy to, you know, work with a lot of more people you know, moving forward, obviously, and try to help them, uh, you know, uh, dream, uh, live their dream the same as I've been able to do. Here's a, here's a question that just came to me. Do you feel more fulfillment from winning a race yourself now or from your students winning a race? You know, it's, uh, of, of course, it's fantastic to win yourself because you've been in the car sweating, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, putting in the hours. Uh, yeah, of course. But I have to say, I never thought that I was going to get the same, satisfa same satisfaction or, you know, that the satisfaction I get from seeing my, you know, prodigies winning and succeeding and you know improving and stuff like that I'm, I'm just you know so excited for them for their family for themselves and i you know as late as last weekend last saturday actually i was at a test in esterville with one of my youngsters that never driven a p2 car before and was there to learn carbon brakes and just learn the track and all that kind of stuff end of the day he he ran really really competitive fast race laps and or a test laps, and I was so proud of him. And you know, I I just felt like, man, I remember how this felt being a driver myself, like you know, mm. 30 years ago. So I can just I can relate to what they are and how they feel. And it's just it's just you know a, a really really good feeling. That's that's, that's so awesome to hear. Seriously, Nick, like um, I I love it. I love the story. I love the dream that you're living. I love the fact that you're helping people live their dream. And it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Bye bye.